Welcome to The Authority File, the podcast where you'll hear conversations with academic librarians, technologists, researchers, and authors whose work is laying the foundation for higher education's future. I'm Bill Mickey, your host and the editorial director at Choice, and I'm excited to be speaking with Nicola Jones, who is director of the SDG program at Springer Nature, SDG standing for Sustainable Development Goals. In the next four episodes, we'll be addressing, you guessed it, sustainable development goals, but our discussion will specifically address how a major publisher has realigned some of its output to match and support the United Nations sustainable development goals. As director of Springer's SDG program, Nicola is responsible for coordinating the publishing activity across Springer Nature's portfolio as it relates to the UN's goals. This has required significant changes to the publisher's interdisciplinary relationships and activities from both an editorial and operational perspective. Nicola is here to give us an insider's look at those changes and how they've been rolled out to the academic research and professional communities. This series is brought to you with support from Springer Nature. In this second episode, we discuss the operational elements of Springer's Sustainable Development Goals program, including how it has leveraged new interdisciplinary opportunities, as well as some of the challenges it faced in executing on those. I imagine like what might make your job a little bit easier are projects like that virtual conference series where it kind of brings together these cross-disciplinary folks to sort of collaborate on um, a a thing, you know? So um, I'm wondering how, you know, how the support of the SDGs has solidified um, you know, interdisciplinary research and or opened up new opportunities, you know, for collaborations within Springer, kind of like that virtual conference series. Yeah, so that's been really central to what we've been trying to do. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's one thing to say we want to support the SDGs and we want this to bring people together. But then if what happens as a result of that is everybody sort of goes back to their own silos and then publishes stuff that only speaks to their own community then you know have have you really gained anything so we've been quite explicit that we want this to be part of generating new initiatives and new activities and encouraging people to work together and the the real support structure that's enabled that at Springer Nature has been the formation of working groups around particular SDGs so we have them for I think about 10 to 12 of the SDGs at the moment. By the end of this year, we should have them for all of them. Um, But these are great groups that have kind of grown up quite organically from different sets of colleagues, individually and in groups, saying, this is a topic that I particularly care about. And other people going, this is a topic that I particularly care about as well. Mm -hmm. And then creating a space in which those people can talk to each other and, you know, many cases are kind of physical or virtual space in that there is time set aside in people's calendars to actually have a meeting and talk about this is what I'm working on. This is what I'm working on. This is the area that I'm particularly interested in that relates to this particular goal. These are the contacts that I have in this area. And from that information sharing, we've seen some really amazing projects launch. Mm-hmm. It's also been nice that we've been able to allow the groups to determine their own agenda. So there haven't been, you know, very clear boxes for them to tick. It's been it's been a case of get together, exchange your information and then think about what, what you'd like to do and how you might do it. So it's a little more spontaneous that way. I was going to ask you about that if like you if you sent them in there with specific goals by the end of the meetings or, or, or not, basically. I mean, really the only goal they've had is talk to each other yeah, and okay. share information because in right. a company the size we are with like 9,000 employees, it's really hard to do that outside mm-hmm. of your immediate teams. And so like one example of, of a really exciting initiative that came out of the working groups or one of the working groups last year was we did a conference on um, 
gender equity in research that was an idea generated by the SDG5 gender equity working group. But they went out and connected with our Spring and Nature Women's Network, our internal employee network to um, to promote women's advancement in the company. Mm-hmm. And they also connected with Nature Conferences, which is a external facing um, conference kind of host and Scientific American. And between these different groups hosted this amazing virtual conference that explored all of the issues and barriers around um, achieving gender equity in academic research. And that's just, I think, not something that would have happened had those different groups been able to speak to each other. So was this a conference for, who, who was the audience for that? It was an academically focused conference, but it was mm-hmm. aimed at people who wanted to address structural inequalities mm. in academia. It was not particularly a conference to to focus on kind of research around that. Right. It was, yeah, it was intended to... I think really explore the issues at a kind of practical level and Mm -hmm. share examples of of where barriers are being broken down and how they've been broken down. Excellent. So I'm wondering then if Springer as a company um, has ever, you know, as you mentioned, 9,000 employees. I mean, does it have a sort of internally focused uh, conferences or sessions on things that it's doing and and showing its own employees how you know certain collaborations are working um i'm just curious if there's anything yeah like that, no, that we, yeah. i mean we have loads actually a yeah. really significant part of my job is about internal communication of yeah. what's happening with the program and making mm-hmm. sure that that's visible to colleagues <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and as a consequence i'm quite visible internally now <laughs> um are quite quite well connected with lots of people, certainly in editorial and publishing across the business. So there is a, a webinar series, um, a couple of different webinar series, in fact. So there's um, like lightning talks that we mm-hmm. run internally that have explored lots of different aspects of our business, but they've also focused, we've had some focused on the SDGs. So Mm -hmm. something about the SDG publishing program in general, something about our sustainable business in general and our commitment to being carbon neutral. We did something about the connection between our SDG publishing and our open access publishing, as well as kind of general program updates. So there's a lot of quite visible internal communications about the program that we also hope to um to extend externally as well actually one of the nice things that we see whenever we arrange any sort of external facing event is that loads of spring and nature colleagues turn up to find out what's going on because (laughs) then they also want to share this with their external communities and they're also really interested in this topic it's always yeah there's there's just such a depth of enthusiasm Mm. for addressing this subject it's really yeah. really easy to get volunteers to work on sdg related projects yeah i can imagine um so you mentioned uh you know talking about being carbon neutral and i'm wondering you know if you could talk briefly uh this will this will be one more inside baseball kind of question but um how the company is sort of practicing what it's preaching and 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 how you know the sdg program or the company basically is falling in line with its own sustainability goals, you know, to be a sustainable publisher. Yeah. So we are, you know, very clear that if we are going to position ourselves as the SDG publisher of choice, which is what Mm. we aspire to be, we need to make sure that our own house is in order. We need to kind of walk the walk as it were. So we have a director of sustainable business who I work with very, very closely and have done for pretty much the whole time 
that I've been in this job, the two positions were created around the same time, um, which I think was really helpful in cementing our commitment internally and externally. So I work really closely with Thea Shearer, who's our Mm. director of sustainable business and climate action officer. And I think she was the first climate action officer to be appointed in the publishing industry. In 2020, we became carbon neutral for our offices, uh, offices and warehouses, fleets and flights. And in 2021, we rolled out our environment policy more broadly. Last year, submitting science-based targets to be uh, net zero by 2040. We're also one of the first publishers to sign up to the Climate Pledge, which again commits us to being net zero by 2040. Um, Last year, another thing that we introduced was a mandatory sustainable business training for all colleagues. So it's part of our annual sort of mandatory um, compliance related training. Now everybody has to undertake training to understand how Springer Nature operates as a sustainable business. And as well as the SDG working groups that uh, look at um, how we can generate new kind of content publishing ideas. We also have a green office network, which uh, engages, if I look here, it's 138 people across 21 offices. And they've been able to achieve some really significant local change initiatives. So for example, our New York office has just been certified um, by Oceanic Global as, I have to look up what certification we got for that. Um, But you know, it's been certified as a particularly sustainable workplace. Mm. And they've been able to, in the London office where I work, um, get something that seems, it seems like a really simple initiative, but signage on the recycling bins (laughs) has been like an issue that was raised to me. And I just didn't know what to do with it for wow. years about no nobody knew quite what was supposed to go in the food waste bin the general waste bin and the recycling bin and so green office network fixed that um they also got rid of disposable cutlery <laughs> so it's that kind of uh, yeah. that kind of sort of local level initiative that's really spearheaded by groups that are based in those offices mm-hmm well, I can tell you, you know, my neighbors and I will sometimes still meet out in the street during recycling day when we're putting our bins out to make sure we're all complying with what's supposed to go into the recycling bin or not. So it is a confusing, uh, it remains a confusing thing for, for folks. And I'm wondering, so, you know, with the cross-disciplinary nature of Springer's STG program, I, you know, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about some of the uh challenges i imagine of of organizing springer's publishing portfolio in a way that's easy to understand from a from a customer perspective you know sometimes you know taking advantage of all these cross channel opportunities can be really confusing you know in in terms of how you want to present you know your array of content resources to you know your your audience and i'm wondering how you guys um kind of overcame that Yeah, so in a few different ways. I mean, our business models have evolved quite a lot over the the past six years Mm -hmm. as well. Um, And the move from kind of very, very large content packages to something that's a little bit more tailored and increasing transformative agreements with the shift to open access publishing has been, that's been the kind of transition that our commercial colleagues have gone on. through the period. Now, when mm-hmm. we're talking about offering cross-disciplinary research, and but that research is still available for purchase in ebook packages that relate to specific disciplines, there is right. a bit of a disconnect there. So when we launched the single title ebook purchase model a couple of years ago, it allows librarians to select on a title by title basis, the books, the ebooks that they want to purchase. One of the the first things that the books team looked at for organizing that content was to the SDGs and saying, you know, instead of you previously would have had to purchase the engineering package or the chemistry package. Now, if the topic that you're actually really interested in is um, responsible consumption and production, 
here's a list of all the books that we published in the last year that relate to SDG 12. Mm -hmm. And off you go with this new purchasing model. So that's one way Mm -hmm. in which we're doing it. Another way in which we're doing it to try to display the content in a slightly more user-friendly way is through the SDG hubs. So we have a hub page on springernature.com for each of the 17 SDGs where the colleagues from the working groups that I mentioned previously curate selections of content um, that support each of the goals. And when I say content, I really mean it in its very broadest sense. So Mm -hmm. there are lists of journals, there are lists of books on there. There are also um, articles and chapters if you want to go down a level. And then there's kind of supplementary content. So commissioned interviews, blogs, podcasts, uh, that kind of thing that supports the content that we've published and gives our authors a bit more of a platform to talk about the work that they're doing and why it's important to them. Mm -hmm. Um, We also host collections on that area, so on on those hub pages. So where we open collections that relate to the SDGs, and we're increasingly seeing this done across different groups of journals. It's another, another thing that we weren't doing six years ago when I started in this job. Um, Now we're able to say, well, SDG 14, Life Below Water, we publish loads of aquatic and marine sciences journals, and they each have a slightly different community that they service and a slightly different angle on sustainable oceans. Mm -hmm. So if we want to publish an article collection, we need to include all of those 15 to 20 journals. Right. And we can highlight that through the SDG 14 hub. You just heard from Nicola Jones. Nicola is director of the SDG program at Springer Nature. Join us next week as we examine Springer's SDG program more closely by highlighting a few of the publisher's SDG content hubs good health and well-being, quality education, and affordable and clean energy. We'll look at how these hub formats collect and organize Springer's varied resources. This four-part series is brought to you with support from Springer Nature. Springer, in particular, the Springer imprint, has published a lot of educational research over the years. And I think SDG 4 is another SDG where there's a really large volume of research published annually. And the way in which we bring this together is to host what I would say research about how you deliver quality education alongside research on issues in education. As always, underwriting opportunities for the Authority File podcast are directed by Choices Advertising Manager Pam Marino, and all of our episodes are produced and edited by Choices Digital Media Producer Sabrina Kofer, with support from Digital Media Assistant Ashley Roy. That's all for this week. Thanks for joining us.